Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I will be going through the populations in ecosystem topic of the A level biology curriculum. Let's begin. So, starting off with the important definitions that you should be aware of, we have habitat. So, habitat is basically where an organism lives. Next is the population. So, the population is all the individuals of the same species, so the same species living together in a habitat. So what you should keep in mind is that it's the same species. We do not change the species. So for example, if the habitat is a forest and we are the individuals, the species uh, we are taking into account is rats, then we can't take any other species into account. For example, monkeys would not be considered in the populations. It would only be rats. So it's all individuals of the same species living together in a habitat. And this is different to community, which is populations of different species um, living together. So this time we can have multiple and different species so we can have monkeys we can have rats we can have lions we can have tigers and all of these species um, that are in one habitat would be considered as part of the community next we have the niche so this is basically the role of a species uh, within the community so uh, for example a species uh, might um, eat a certain thing and might live in a certain thing is basically the role what it does and uh, within the community and that's what the niche is and carrying capacity finally is the size of population of species an ecosystem can hold okay so the population um, size of species um, can vary due to a number of factors for example the abiotic factor so these are all the non-living components um, of an ecosystem. So these can include uh, water, oxygen, pH, and light, and um, more other factors. And then we have the biotic factors, which is basically all the living factors. And from the specification, you need to be aware of the interspecific competition. So inter in biology basically means um, out of something it's not within something so in for, for this example interspecific competition is between different species so it's not within the same species where whereas the intraspecific competition intra is usually within one thing and um, so within the same species and um, so this is intraspecific competition uh, and also pred predation um, can change the population size of the species so the size of population can be estimated and um, using so for slow moving or non-mobile species uh, species so non-mobile can include uh, plants and slow moving for example snails so we can use random quadrating or quadrating along concept so random quadrating for example if we're looking at this beach and we want to measure in a, in a certain area, we want to measure the total um, number of um, stones or rocks. So what we can do is just random quadrating and we can get an estimate of um, the population. But if we want to do systematic sampling or basically the um, um, quadrating along a transect sampling, um, this is used to measure the distribution. So let's say if we wanted to know how the um, the number of rocks changes as we move further from the sea so that's when we would use uh, systematic sampling so that's a bit different from random sampling so moving on to random sampling first so what we do is we get two measuring tapes and we place them perpendicular to each other so we basically place them at right angles to each other so for example this is one of my measuring tapes and this is my other uh, measuring tape uh, so we place them perpendicular uh, to each other and what we do then is we generate two 
um, coordinates from the random number generator. So we just learned this method that we, we use the random number generator to obtain two coordinates um, and place the quadrat into at intersection of coordinates. So for example, we have, uh, as we have the measuring tape here, um, what we can do is when we get the coordinates, we can follow along. Um, so let's say we have five there. So what we can do is we can go up from five and let's say we get seven for the other coordinate and we move along seven. So wherever we meet is where we place the quadrat and this is where we would uh, measure. So we would repeat this method a large number of times, um, usually 10 or more quadrats in a given area um, to make our uh, investigation representative of the whole population. So as um, the larger the number of um, investigations, the larger the number of quadrats that we place, um, the more representative and the more accurate um, the, sum, the investigation would be. So from this we can estimate the population of a whole area. Um, we can also estimate the percentage cover of a species uh, by basically um, measuring the percentage of quadrat which contains that species and we can measure the abundance of a given species and we can also measure the population density uh, by just um, getting all the the number of the species and dividing by the whole area. So these are all the different things that can be measured using the random sampling. So next we have the systematic sampling. So the process is that we place the transect across an area randomly. So this mark point and it confuses some people uh, because they think that it's meant to be uh, in regular intervals. How is it randomly? Well, it is in regular intervals, but we, where we place the transect is random. And um, so, for example, if in this beach, if we are measuring um, how the the number of plastic bottles and um, the how the number of plastic bottles changes as we move across the sea. Uh, we we can place our transect in a lot of different places. We can place it there, 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 there. So so where we place the transect has to be done randomly. So this is why we place the transect across area randomly. So next we would measure using an appropriate interval. Uh, it depends on the investigation being carried out, and we would again repeat a large number of times. So our investigation is representative. So the mark release recapture method. So this is used for mobile organisms. So for example, to measure the number of um, birds or other species. So what we do is we would collect a sample of a particular species that we want to investigate. So we would first collect the sample and measure how many uh, species there are and then mark all of these species and then we would release these species back into the environment. So when we calculate the, when we collect the particular species, we, uh, we mark all of the species and uh, we um, number each species and calculate how many species we have marked. And then we release all of these species back to into the environment. And then we allow species enough time uh, to reintegrate into the population because uh, as soon as we release the um, the species they might not uh, have been able to reintegrate into the population it might uh, take them a while um, to get back into the population that's why we allow some time and then what we do is we recapture the species and um, so recapture uh, the particular species that we first captured randomly and we record the total number caught and the total number marked this time. And that's how we can calculate the population size. So it, the formula is basically the population caught the first time, multiplied the population caught the second time and divided by how many, uh, the, how many species were caught the second time that were marked. So for example, in this, uh, in this example, we've been told that um, traps were set in a wood and 
15 mice were caught in the first sample and they were marked in release and two days later uh, mice caught uh, mice were caught again and there were nine mice caught and three of them were marked so using the formula so i've been told so I, I would say this is n1 so this is how many we caught the first time and the nine would be the n2 so how many we caught the second time and three would be nm so how many were marked in the second time and putting this into the formula into the equation we would get p is equal 15 times 9 divided by 3 which would just give uh, 45 mice as the population okay so mark release recapture and um, there are some assumptions that you should be aware of so it assumes that the population size of the species remains uh, uh, constant and it does not change uh, between the two capture times so for example if when we measured the first um, species to the second species there should be no birth no immigration so the population sh um, should remain constant and uh, marking shouldn't make animals more susceptible to predators or harm them um, because this is likely to uh, make and uh, this is likely to um, decrease their population as um, the predators will be able to uh, hunt them down and kill them so the marking shouldn't make them more susceptible to um, predators or harm them and marking shouldn't rub off or be lost because if it rubs off th then uh, we won't be able to count and um, the species that we marked the first time and enough time should be given and to fully integrate uh, into the population so and integrate into the rest of the um, population so i will be covering succession um, in my next video thank you so much for watching this video if you did like this video don't forget to subscribe to see more of these and you can watch my recent videos by clicking on the links popping up thank you